Greetings class students! In this video I'm going to show how you can create a painted image from a picture onto your glass using glass paints. Here are your supplies. So in this project I'm using glass line paints and we got a nice uh, set of them their basic color kit in the studio so I made some little test tile samples to show what all the different colors look like in some different conditions so this shows what they look like on white glass what they look like on black glass what happens when they have a clear cap over top of them and if it's a single layer so you can see in the very middle that's where there's a clear cap and it stayed the same size and on the edges everything kind of squeezed in a little bit because it was a single layer at full fuse and you can see that I'm testing out different qualities of the paint whether it's painted on with a brush using a sponge ponce or using one of the fine tip applicators you're going to get a different effect using any of these you can also kind of tell the opacity that areas where I put a very thin layer on you can actually see through to the background layer of glass so that's also something to consider depending on your project is how many layers of the paint you want on there and keep in mind that the thicker it is, the more prone the paint is to cracking. It's closer to a clay base, this type of paint, and so when it gets really, really thick, you get little craters and cracks, which you can kind of see on the yellow in the corner. Uh, it's always a good idea to make some test tiles using any new products you might be getting, whether that's frit or different types of glass paints, and to check and see how they do at different temperatures in your kiln. Uh, different kilns will fire differently at different temperatures. So if you're going to a different studio and trying to get the same results that you get maybe in our studio, it's good to do a test because our kilns actually run a little bit hotter. It says 1465 on these, but our kilns are firing closer to 1480 when we're setting that temperature. All right, before you do any glass cutting, make sure that you've printed out your image to the size you want it. And I used a sheet protector to trace on so I could create a thick outline of the image, um, which will lend itself more to kind of cartoon graphic quality that it's going to end up looking like. So I made my tracing on my sheet protector and you can print out your image in both black and white and color. If it's easier for you to create the line drawing on the black and white, feel free to do so. Keep in mind this method is really only useful if you're using a translucent glass or a clear. For this project, I'm separating my outline from my color, so they'll be on two separate sheets of glass, but you can do something similar uh, by working on both sides of the clear glass or tack fusing in between layers so your paint doesn't move around. But in this one we're going to do it on two separate pieces of glass. So first I'm putting my line drawing using the black glass line paint. And you can purchase glass line paints online uh, either color by color, so one at a time. I think there are some of them are more than others but they're about ten twelve dollars each or you can get a full kit they sell a basic color kit as well as some warm color kits and cool color kits for a, an entire spectrum of colors but I'm just using the black for the outline and you can get a set of fine tips um, to put on top and that's what I'm using is one of the finer tips so my line is nice and thin trying to get all these little details in there, especially around his eyes. It's very precise lines that I'm trying to make, that if they don't go in the right direction or if they bleed together, then it won't look right. So I'm being very careful and erasing and redrawing where I need to. So it's good to have a little Q-tip available or a small rag that you can erase those fine details and redraw them if you need to. So funny thing, I realized that I had traced this in the reverse by accident. When I tried to line it up with my color image, it was opposite. It was backwards. 
So I could have uh, just reversed the glass, made it so the paint would fire down instead of facing up, but I really wanted it to be facing up. So I did it a second time, making sure that I had my tracing aligned properly before placing my glass there. So just a reminder to check and double check before you start painting. Next for the color layer, I first of all, I made some notes on my color sheet, noting which colors I was going to use for which parts uh, of the glass line. I noted that his hair is gonna, I'll be using the white for his skin tones. I'll be using a mixture of the pink and yellow. Uh, for his mask, I'll use a turquoise and a little bit of white. For his jacket, I'm going to be mixing together green and gray as well as green and black and back and forth for the lighter tones and darker tones of that. I'll use a little bit of brown for his mittens and more black for the chair he's sitting on. And then finally some crimson for his shoes, which his shoes aren't originally crimson, but that's what I'm going to use. So since I'm using two separate pieces for this, I need to make sure that I'm lining up my image properly. Um, originally I was planning for this to be a standing piece where I fixed both plates to a base and they'd be just staggered slightly apart. You'll see later I changed that up a bit, but I'm making sure that the base of each piece of glass is in the same position and the line drawing lines up with the color image. I got started with uh, my skin tone color that's some of the pink mixed with a little bit of yellow and uh, it's always good to start from back to front in this case. Uh, I am still going to try and keep my colors separate as possible but it's easier to scratch away uh, errors instead of trying to cover them up. So if I start in the back and I run over a little bit, maybe the skin tone ends up on his hair some, I can wait till that dries and scratch it away and then fill in where the hair needs to be. Same around the mask in different areas. To apply the paint with my brush, I'm not doing strokes of paint because that kind of just pushes it all around. I'm really just kind of dabbing it on there so it pools more and this will give me more opaque color. Uh, some other artists will sandblast their glass before painting on it to create more ridges that the paint can stick to or we don't have a sandblaster so another option would be to use a low grit sandpaper or um, sanding block to rough it up. I chose to just try this out on the plain glass just to see how good I could get it and I was happy with the results but if you want to experiment with creating a base layer that's roughed up or I've also seen folks um, put on a layer of glass line paint all over like a base layer of white and tack fuse that and then apply their next layers of paint and that creates a texture that you can paint on top of. If you're really into this painting technique, I highly recommend the glass line paint videos that AAE puts out. Tanya Veit makes some great free uh, webinars that are available on YouTube and on the AAE Glass website. So definitely check those out. I'm trying to show here my cleaning technique for the tips uh, of the fine line detailer. Whenever I'm switching colors, I need to make sure that I clean the tip really, really well. So I filled this other little squeeze bottle with water and I actually use that as my little jet stream to clean it with some water. And the set actually comes with a set of um, little needles to help you clean out the tips too. So make sure you're cleaning those as you go. Uh, you don't wanna let your paint get dried in there and 
end up mixing your colors or having a clogged tip that you cannot use. And you can see that I'm using um, the tip for some of my lines for uh, filling in areas where it's just completely the color from the tube. I'm just using the fine detailer again and filling those bits and pieces in uh, as I'm waiting for other parts to dry. You can use a hair dryer or a heat gun to speed up the drying process if you're trying to add some layers like I'm trying to do with uh, his forehead. But uh, make sure that you're not concentrating heat gun especially in the same spot for too long because it can cause thermal shock if you heat superheated a section of the glass while the rest of it is cool you're going to create stress in the glass and that can cause it to crack so be careful now i'm going to add some shading to my bernie forehead and i've just added a little bit of gray to my original pink and yellow mixture for my peachy tone None of these colors are exactly what you see in the image. You can see in the picture, he's actually a lot more rosy than I've made him, but I'm not going for realistic. I'm going for representation, and it, this is much more of an illustration than a photograph. But I am trying to get some of the shading in there so he looks a little bit more modeled. Based on the end results, I could have put a little bit more of each of these colors on just so they'd be a little bit stronger, but you can still see them in the end results. They're still there. They're just very subtle. Just remember that whatever colors you're adding on top, you're adding to that original color. So it's going to change the tone of it uh, depending on what, what it's on top of. For example, if I tried to add this pink on top of any of the black areas, the pink would be very, very dark and probably wouldn't be able to see it. But because I've got this very pale tone as my base, um, it should add some color. So remember when I said to work from back to front? Well, while I was making this, I was impatient while waiting for other things to dry and I thought, hey, why not do the mittens? It'll be great, it'll be done, and then it'll be easy to do the rest. But alas, I realized once I had finished the mittens that I was gonna have a very, very hard time filling in his jacket and all the colors in the back without messing up those little mittens. So after finishing my mittens, I made the decision to wipe it away and start over um, just because it would be really, really hard to kind of block off the mitten area. But luckily it's easy enough to wipe off. Just use a damp cloth and then clean it up with your rubbing alcohol afterwards too is really a smart idea to know so you're working with clean glass. But to get started with the larger areas of the jacket, I've got my gray and the dark green mixture. And I'm using a little sponge ponce, which is nice for uh, painting a larger area. And I'm just using the edge of the ponce so I can get a straight line as I'm going. Like I said earlier, if I make a mistake, it's okay because I can just scratch it away. I immediately accidentally put a little bit onto his face, but it's all right. It was such a little amount that I was actually able to just kind of wipe it away with my finger. After that, I got smart and started using a little piece of paper to block off areas that I didn't want my paint to land on, especially around his face where the jacket needed to get close up. So again, I probably could have started this with doing the jacket as my very first color uh, since it came up around the ears, but using the little paper piece of paper as uh, a mask, that worked out pretty well as well. And you'll notice that I'm going outside of my lines with the ponts for some of these colors, which is okay, because remember once it is dry, I will be able to scratch it away and get a very clean line where I need it.
last portion I did were his pants, which I used a mixture of black and gray along with just some black parts to do the different parts of the shading for his pants. Here they are before firing. I cut a second layer of clear for each of them. So each of these is a full two layers with the painted layer on top with the paint sitting on top. And glass line is nice because it does go glossy at our full fuse temperature and uh, you don't have to apply any extra layers of medium to achieve that glossiness. And here are the pieces after fusing. Uh, they turned out really well. And here they are separated. Like I said, each one is two layers thick with the glass line layers are on top. And then stacked on top of each other, they create a complete image of my little Bernie Sanders meme. And you can use the same technique to decorate one of your dishes, a bowl or a platter, and just put maybe an opal color behind it, something light, we'll make sure that all those colors stay true and bright. You don't have to fuse them separately, you can just do it all in one go, either with the glass line on top or in between the layers is fine. Just be careful if you are putting the, la the glass line in between layers when fusing. If the glass line is really, really thick, then that can create uh, extra bubbles in between your glass. And that's all for this video. In the next one, I will show you how I ended up finishing and displaying my components. Thanks for watching. See you in the studio.